The Cell Cycle by Anna Kessler and Chris Renier. Cells pervade every aspect of life. From plants and animals to viruses and bacteria, cells are the basic unit of life. From the hairs on the back of our necks to the strings of a celery stick, cells divide and reproduce in order to sustain us and functions that we perform unconsciously. This is accomplished through asexual reproduction called mitosis, which replicates the DNA of the mother cell. Whether it is blood cells or brain cells, cells within an organism reproduce asexually in order to replace dead cells and compensate for growth. The part of a cell's life in which it reproduces is called the M phase and takes up very little part of the cell cycle, about 10% actually. Prophase is the first phase of mitotic division. Here we see how the centrosomes are splitting and two centrioles are forming. The chromatin in the center of the nucleus is condensing, the mitotic spindle form. Metaphase is the next phase of mitotic division. Here we see that the centrosomes are at the poles of the cell and the nuclear envelope has dissolved. Microtubules connect to the kinetic core on the chromosomes and the chromosomes have aligned along the center of the cell called the metaphase plate. Anaphase comes as the third phase of mitosis. It is also the shortest phase of mitosis. The two daughter chromosomes move toward opposite ends of the cell pulled by the shortening of their kinetic core microtubules. There are now two pairs of chromosomes, one for each of the new cells. Telophase is the final phase of mitosis. The nuclear envelope begins to form around the new sets of chromosomes that decondense into chromatin. There are two distinct nuclei and the mitotic spindle dissolves. Note that there are three chromosomes, the same number we started with. They are identical to the chromosomes of the mother cell. Cytokinesis happens concurrent to telophase, marked by a cleavage furrow. The cytoplasm of the mother cell divides and moves, so an equal amount is in each daughter cell. Meiosis I is the first phase of meiosis. In this phase, two diploid daughter cells are formed, each containing double chromosomes. Prophase 1. Here, homologous chromosomes pair and transfer segments between one another, forming tetrads, joined at junctures called chiasmata. As in mitosis, the mitotic spindle forms, and chromatin has condensed. The centrosomes move toward the poles. Metaphase 1 is similar to the mitotic metaphase in that the chromosomes, in this case the tetrads, align along the metaphase plate. Crossovers, where homologous pairs of sister chromatids overlap and exchange, form recombinant chromosomes. Anaphase 1 is similar to its mitotic cousin. Tetrads are pulled apart towards the centrioles at either pole via the kinetic core connections. In other words, the homologous pairs are split up. Telophase 1. As you can see, the result is two haploid cells that contain double chromosomes, but there are still half as many chromosomes as in the original cell. The chromosomes do not condense into chromatin at this point, however. Instead, meiosis II begins. Meiosis II is essentially mitotic division of the daughter cells of meiosis I. At the end of meiosis II, there will be four cells, each with single chromosomes. Meiosis II happens simultaneously in both daughter cells. Prophase II is the same as in mitosis. Centrial pairs form and move toward the poles, and the mitotic spindle forms. Metaphase II is again with the chromosomes, in dyads, allowing along the metaphase plate, this time perpendicular to the previous cell's metaphase plate. Anaphase II is when the chromosomes split and are moved from the metaphase plate by kinetic cores, separating sister chromatids. Telophase II happens after anaphase II and is the final phase of meiosis. Here the chromosomes condense into chromatin and the nuclear envelope forms once more. Cytokinesis occurs as it did in mitosis. When all is said and done, each of the daughter haploid cells from meiosis contains some of the DNA from each parent and embrace genetic diversity.